Hello, I'm Great Hands. I hope you're doing fine. My name is Patrick Kamala. I am a tutor and educator for physical sciences and mathematics from grade 10 to 12. Today, I'm happy to take you through this stoichiometry and uh, that is chemical change part 3. Now, throughout this week, we have been going through this worksheet, but uh, I think that we don't have enough time because of the so many tests. But however, for one hour or, or more, let us go through this community together. And in a case you're not at the Nurdaland High School, you can get us at the Rosteke College in town for extra classes. I'm sure you will not miss any part. However, if you're from our smart the extra classes, please you have your, your handout with you. And those learners from uh, Nuldaland, grade 10, you also have your worksheets. Please, as you watch the video, take out the worksheet and then do as I'm going to tell you what to do. Okay. Anyway, um, chemical change part 3. This is about quantitative aspects of chemical change. And specifically, it's called stoichiometry. Now, stoichiometry is a part of chemistry that looks at the relative quantities of reactants and products in uh, chemical reactions. Okay, we use stoichiometry to calculate quantities such as amount of product in mass, in, in mass, moles, and the volume that can be produced with with the given reactants and the percentage yield. So this brings us to the molar concept. Now the molar concept is very important, by the way, and these are the terms which we need to know about molar concept. Now, first of all, the mole is a unit of measurement and expresses the amount of chemical substances. We use the mole as a unit of measurement. Let me say this again. We use the mole as a unit of measurement because the size of atoms, ions, and the molecules is so small. Now, when we say unit of measurement, take an example of the word pair. A pair means two items, right? So, and also a dozen means 12 items. So if I have got two dozens, I have got 24 items. And then if I have got um, three dozens, I have 36 items. Now, likewise, the mole is just like that. Now, for the mole, the number of items, they are called Avogadro's number, which is NA, as you're going to see. Okay. So... Um, we define a mole as the amount of pure substance containing the, the same number of chemical units as there are atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12, which is actually 6,02 times 10 power 23 atoms. Okay. Um, the mole of anything contains 6,02 times 10 power 23 of that object and uh, one mole of an element in grams contains 6,02 times 10 power 23 atoms. For example, one mole of carbon equals to 6,02 times 10 power 23 carbon atoms and also, one mole of bananas is the same as 6,02 times 10 power 23 bananas. Okay. Um, now, this number, the number 6,02 times 10 power 23 is known as Avogadro's number, which we abbreviate as NA. Okay. So, whenever you see NA, you must know that it is Avogadro's number. And its value is 6,02 times 10 power 23. Okay, let us proceed. Now, Avogadro's number written in full is 6,02 
zero 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 and zero so it's such a big number and um that is avogadro's number which is na okay now the unit of the mole is written mole m o l and is the basic unit of measurement in chemistry actually in chemistry we talk about moles so much that's our basic unit of measurement okay um the mass of one mole of an element is equal to the relative atomic mass of the element in grams let me say this again the mass of one mole of an element is equal to the relative atomic mass of the element in grams for example one mole of carbon has a mass of 12 grams okay and one mole of oxygen has a mass of 16 grams and one mole of helium has a mass of 4 grams let me show you something here now if I look at my periodic table just like this one here um, if you check here now again for example if we have um, something like this one here let me show you here now check what is happening here now likewise one mole of boron atoms contains a mass of 11 grams and one mole of nitrogen atoms has a mass of 14 grams also one mole of fluorine atoms has a mass of 19 grams okay let me give you more examples again one mole of chlorine atoms has a mass of 35,5 grams one mole of sulfur has a mass of 32 grams one mole of phosphorus has a mass of 31 grams and one mole of aluminium has a mass of 27 grams I think you see that this periodic table it shows us one mole for each element in grams okay let us proceed let us proceed now um the relative molecular mass of a molecule is the combined relative atomic masses of all the atoms in the molecule for example the relative molecular mass of water that is H2O is 1 times 2 then plus 16 which gives us 18 grams okay remember that hydrogen the molar mass is 1 but because there are two atoms that's why I say 1 times 2 then oxygen being 16 I have to add 16 plus 2 which gives me 18 grams I hope we are together if you're not together please you can pause the video and uh, replay it okay anyway now the relative formula mass of an ionic substance is the combined relative atomic masses of all atoms in the ionic substance I repeat the relative formula mass of an ionic substance is the combined relative atomic masses of all atoms in the ionic substance as you're gonna see in the calculations just shortly after here um, for example the relative molecule formula mass of sodium chloride is now sodium chloride is any then cl so we have 23 plus 35 comma 5 which gives us 58,5 grams so this is the relative formula mass of sodium chloride okay um next the molar mass m of a substance is the mass of any substance relative to the amount of substance 
let us continue so the molar mass is the mass the molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance okay let me say it again the molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance we are going to talk about this more and more and more and more i'm saying that so the molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance is the mass of what of one mole of a substance let us proceed let us proceed um we have a example here the question says find the molar mass that's m of two ammonium chloride at stp now stp as you're gonna see in the future it's it is it, it represents standard temperature and the pressure so i want to find the molar mass of what of ammonium chloride okay so i'm going to add the relative atomic masses of these now from my periodic table nitrogen is 14 hydrogen is 1 chlorine is 35,5 so the molar mass is going to be the sum of all these ones here however let me show you how to do this one here now you see these two here and then nitrogen and then hydrogen and chlorine let us take it out together that is we want to find the molar mass of two ammonium chloride okay let's take out our calculator and do the computations we want molar mass of what two ammonium chloride okay now don't forget that is it that that is a two ne? that is what that is a two ammonium chloride okay so let me first display what i'm gonna do here now the two i'm on, now i i have i have tried the two first ne? i'm going to say two okay then multiplied by open brackets now ammonium it's nh4 now n n is nitrogen which has got a mass of what a mass of 14 okay mass of 14 hope you can take down the table so i'm gonna say 14 14 and then it is nh4 then now plus plus now if you check my hydrogen it is one but there are four of them so i'm going to say plus one times four plus one times what times four because there are four hydrogen atoms okay and then after that because this ammonium chloride is nh4cl then i must add the mass of the cl that's chlorine which is a uh, 35,5 so i'm going to say 35,5 okay and then afterwards now i'm going to close my brackets and i get my answer which is actually it is 107 i don't know if you see how i get it but i hope so which is 10 what 107 okay so that's how i get my answer now this is 107 grams per mole let's go back to our board and then continue now if you check what i did here that's exactly what i've just told you guys that i'm going to have a two then multiplied by 14 plus 1 times 4 plus 3.5 which gives me 107 grams per mole i hope we are together let us proceed let us proceed let us proceed okay next um now now the mole like i said it is very important and because of its importance we need to know how to calculate the moles okay so here we have a formula which is to do with uh, the molecular formula the number of moles the mass and the molar mass so this formula relates the moles 
the mass and the molar mass of a particular element or a particular compound okay now the formula says n that's number of moles equals to mass in grams divided by in divided by molar mass in grams per mole i say the n equals to mass over molar mass divided by what by mass by molar divide as kiss number of moles n equals to the mass in the grams divided by the molar mass which is in the grams per mole we're going to look at with examples shortly after here okay um we can take example to say it's how many moles of substance are represented by the given mass of each substance below so part a part a is sodium atoms they're saying 19 grams of sodium atoms now don't forget that sodium from periodic table is 23 grams per mole and then the given mass in the question is 19 grams so i want to know how many moles are contained in 19 grams for sodium atoms so like i said before the formula says number of moles equals to mass over molar mass so the given mass is 19 grams divided by 23 grams per mole now if we compute this one here let's check it out what we get that is 19 divided by by 23 divided by what 23 so if i say um 19 remember it was yeah it was like this i have 19 as my numerator then divided by by what by 23 so what do i get as you can see i have 19 about the upon the pressing sd button it gives me 0 comma eight two six zero eight six nine five six five moles but in our papers in our taste we need to do the small places so it means my answer is going to be zero comma eight three moles i hope we are together let's go back to our whiteboard okay um now if you check what i did here that's what I've just shown you exactly, and my answer was 0, 0,83 moles. Let us proceed. Um, part B, they say, 35 grams of anhydrated copper to sulfate. So the mass is 35 grams, and then um, I need to find, because they're saying copper to sulfate, I need to find what? To find the molar mass for copper to sulfate which is my capital M, then I divide. So I'm going to get 35 grams divided by molar mass of copper to sulfate. Now, if you take the predicate table, copper is 63,5, and then sulfur is 32. Then oxygen is what? It is 16. But because they are 4, that's why I say times 4 here. When I compute this, my denominator gives me um 159.5 and don't forget I will, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with uh, 35 grams of copper so if i divide this on my calculator surely i get 0, 0.22 moles then last example says find the number of moles contained in 39 grams of carbon tetrachloride carbon tetrachloride okay now um the mass given to me is 39 grams and because they're talking about carbon tetrachloride i have to find out the molar mass ne? okay now carbon tetrachloride it uh, looks like this one here we have got um carbon here in the middle okay then the tetra means there are four chloride atoms which are surrounding this uh, carbon atom and so for that matter when i'm looking for the molar mass of carbon tetrachloride i'm going to find out the mass for carbon first then i'm going to add 
the mass of the chlorine atoms but because there are four of them I will multiply the 35,5 by what? by 4 because as you can see here they are four what? they are four chlorine atoms now when I compute that when I compute that um, what do I get? let's check it out together I said the molar mass is gonna be 12 that is for carbon then plus what? 35,5 much multiplied by 4 because as you can see guys these are 4 chlorine atoms now our given mass was what? it was 39 grams né, of carbon so let's check it out together let's check it out so the 39 the 39 divided by what? 39 grams um, okay so we are saying that we are having um, 39 né? 39 grams divided by open brackets we are having carbon which is 12 né? 12 and then plus the chlorine atoms which were how many I hope you remember we said they are 4 né? then multiplied by by what by 35 comma 5 35 comma what comma 5 now um here I have to close my bracket but it would be wiser if I had uh, if I had done what if I had put a bracket here so that I don't confuse the arithmetic because it follows body mass anyway but uh, I have to be clear with my computation so I have to put this bracket here okay so now what's my answer then let's check it out so the answer here um, is 39 over 154 if I press my SD button I get 0 0.253 moles 0 0.253 moles don't forget the formula moles equals to mass divided by molar mass okay so if you check what I got here in my worksheet it is what 0 0.25 moles as well here I hope we are together let us proceed um now sometimes they can give us the mass rather the the number of moles and then they want us to get the mass don't forget don't worry about it because they will have they would have given you the compound they're talking about so here they say calculate the mass of each substance for the given number of moles so here they gave us what now they gave us 2,1 moles of lead for oxide so they want us to get the mass now um if you remember what we, what we said before we have just said that uh, number of moles number of moles né? equals to what equals to mass over molar mass hope you're not, you're not too forgetful equals to what mass over molar mass right so um now if the question wants mass then how to get the mass from here you just have to make a mass the subject of the formula but you can't have your mass your mass small m your mass small m equals to what equals to the number of moles multiplied by what by the molar mass right multiplied by what by the molar mass and then then you're going to have your mass for that given what compound let us continue with this example here now we are saying that um, we should calculate the mass given 2,1 moles of lead for oxide now lead for oxide is PbO2 
it is pb or this is lead then the oxygen two atoms now um as you see here my mass equals to number of moles which is 2,1 multiplied by the the molar mass for lead for oxide now if i check my periodic table lead has got a, a molar mass of 207 what about oxygen it is 16 but because there are two of them here i do what i multiply by two so when i compute this i come up with what with 501,9 grams now this is the mass of lead oxide which is contained in 2 common moles okay now another question says what about if you have um 1,5 times 10 power negative 3 moles of lithium phosphate of lithium phosphate now again they have given us the the moles 1,5 they want the mass and uh, they're talking about what lithium phosphate so lithium phosphate what is its formula now um i'm going to say again that moles equals to mass of a molar mass now in this particular case i'm going to find molar mass of what of lithium phosphate whose formula is lithium then three then open brackets p of four close bracket now that one if i use my periodic table i'm going to get lithium is seven multiplied by three because of this three here then plus um now the phosphate the phosphorus is 31 what about oxygen is going to be 16 multiplied by 4 then if i substitute here i'm going to have something like this i am going to have 1,5 times 10 power negative 3 equals to mass over 116 so if i make m the subject of the formula i'm going to get 0 comma 17 grams i hope we are together if we are not together pause the video and watch it again actually after this information i advise you to pause the video go check the next class activity and do the questions i think one two and three which are asking you to calculate the moles and the mass of the given what with the given information okay now if you're done with those questions let us proceed and talk about percentage composition now what is that percentage composition it is uh, the composition of a compound i mean yeah the percentage composition of a compound is a relative measure of the mass of um, of each different element present in the compound we have worked example here they say calculate the percentage composition of sulfuric acid now sulfuric acid has got um h2 so4 as you can see i have the, the hydrogen atoms the sulfur atoms and oxygen atoms so if they want me to get the percentage composition of sulfuric acid it means i'm going to find out the comp the percentage composition of hydrogen atoms in uh, sulfuric acid and then also find the percentage composition of sulfur atoms in what in sulfuric acid and also find the percentage composition of oxygen atoms by mass in what in sulfuric acid now how do i do that guys first of all i'm going to find out the molar mass the relative formula mass of sulfuric acid this is h2 s of 4 that's 1 times 2 plus 32 plus 16 times 4 which gives me 98 now because i want the percentage composition of each element in sulfuric acid i can use a table okay so these are the atoms that is hydrogen sulfur and oxygen don't forget my total was what the total was 98 grams per mole now because the only two hydrogen atoms i'm gonna say two divided by 98 multiplied by 100 which gives me 2,04 percent 
So this is the percentage composition of hydrogen in sulfuric acid. I go ahead to find the one for sulfur. Now sulfur the mass is 32 here. So 32 divided by 98 times 100, it gives me 32.56%. Likewise for oxygen, it is 64 divided by 98 again times what 100 which gives me what which gives me 65,31 percent i hope we are together let us proceed um now having looked at the percentage compositions we can now look at the empirical formula of a chemical compound which is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms of each element in a compound. If they say define empirical formula, you say it is what? You say that it is the simplest it is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms of each element in a compound or a molecule. Okay. So this simplest whole number ratio we find it by finding the moles of each atom in the element and then using more ratios or that we yeah, are using more ratios we can simplify to find out how many of each atom are combined in that so because of that it means we don't need fractions we don't need decimals in our empirical formula let us proceed, guys. I hope we are together. For example, they say, find the empirical formula for a compound consisting of 63% manganese and 37% oxygen. Now, um, we do this because of, um, actually do this using the 100 grams of, of the whole compound, okay? Let us check it out. Now this is 63% manganese and 37% oxygen. Okay. Let us check it out. Now manganese, 63% oxygen, 37%. The total is what? 100%. Okay. Now this is what we do usually. We're going to find out the, the moles of manganese by getting mass of a molar mass, which is 63 over 55. It gives us 1,145 moles. Then likewise, oxygen being 37%, I'm going to use moles equals to mass over molar mass. I divide 37 by 16, which gives me what? 2, 3125 moles. Now I have only two elements in this compound. So now from here to get my empirical formula, what I do, I look at these two moles, the 1,145 to 2,325, and then I divide by the smallest number. So if you check here, guys. Which of these numbers is the smallest? Is it 1,145 or 2,3125? Surely, the smallest I think you can see it. It is what? It is this one here. It is the 1,145. So, I divide by 1,145 here and we'll do the same this side. So, when I do so, as you can see here, I get one two two comma zero two but because this is empirical formula where we don't want to frag decimals it means the two comma zero two can be rounded off to two okay so in other words um one manganese combines with the two oxygen atoms to form the formula which is manganese for oxides like this okay let us proceed now this is a class activity here which i said um that you have to try out this question one you try it out please and then um question two and three so try it as well and then um question four is about percentage composition 
which I believe you know it by now. Okay, if you don't understand this, please you can inbox me or you can come to our extra classes at Rostake College that is on 92 Skuman or you can inbox me on 0785 222 for more information. Let us proceed. We have a lot of things to do. This is another class activity. It continues, guys. Where they say determine the empirical formula of each compound with a given percentage composed by mass. So, this is what we have here. This is what we have here. So, do it as well. Hope you are done. Um, now, once again, next we talk about the water of crystallization is the total mass of water retained by certain salts at given temperature and is mostly present in a definite ratio. If they say define water of crystallization, you say what? You say is the total mass of water retained by certain salts at a given temperature and is mostly present in a definite ratio. Okay, now this sort of crystallization is necessary for the maintenance of the salty's crystalline properties, but it can be removed by what? By sufficient heat. So if you heat um, a salt which is hydrated, it's going to lose its water of crystallization. Okay, now um, the water is in the crystalline framework but is not bonded to the ions of the crystal. Please note that. I have worked example here. It says calculate the percentage water of crystallization in copper to sulfate 5 water. So what do I do here? First of all, I find the, the molar mass of copper to sulfate 5 water, like this one here. I know from periodic table that copper is 63,5. What about sulfur? It is 32. Now what about oxygen? It is 16. But because of this 4 here, I must multiply the 4 times 16. And then plus, now this is 5 water, which is H2O. H is 1, then times 2, then plus 16 for this oxygen here. But multiply by 5, so if I simplify this one here, I can see that um, from here, check it out guys, from here up to up here, it gives me the 159,5 grams. And then for the 5 water, for the 5 water, this one here, for the 5 water, it gives me 90 grams. So, because I want to find the percentage of water of crystallization, I divide this 90, I divide the 90 grams, this one here, by the total of copper to sulfate 5 water, which total is this one here. And then I multiply by what? By 100. Because I need to find the percentage, let us check it out. 90 divided by 249,5. 90 divided by 249,5. So when I come here and I say um, 90 divided by 249,5, let's check it out. Now um, we have 90. Over two four nine comma five two four nine comma comma five then multiplied by multiplied by what by by a hundred because I want to get percentage. So what do I get? As you can see here, I get this big number. If I press SD, it gives me what? 36,07%. So, 
that is how I get my water of crystallization as a percentage by mass from that copper to five water. Let us proceed. Um, next, 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 next. Now, um, as you see here, that sensor which I just got just before, and now we have a class activity here. We have a class activity here. Please pause the video and try it out. It says calculate the percentage of vote of crystallization in a A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, when you're done with that, now once again, welcome to our Smart Fismath Tuition Center. Or welcome to Nulderland Grade 10 Chemistry Class. We are talking now about concentration of solutions. Now, the concentration of uh, a solution is a measure of the amount of solute that is dissolved in a solvent. What did I say? That the concentration of a solution is a measure of the amount of solute that is dissolved in what? In a solvent. Okay, let us proceed. Now, a solution can be made less concentrated, that means diluted, or, I mean, by adding more solvent, that's more water. Né? Now, if they say defined concentration, guys, what is concentration? Now, concentration is defined as the number of the number of what yes let me use a red one defined as the number of moles of a solute dissolved in one liter or one decimeter cubed of a solvent let me say it again if we say define the concentration you say it is defined as the number of moles of a solute dissolved in one liter, which is the same as one decimeter cubed of water of a solvent. And uh, it changes when more solute is added. Now, if I have um, salt, two spoons of salt, and I dissolve it in water, okay? Now, the, the salt is called the solute. And then the water is called the solvent. So for me to get my concentration, I get the number of moles of the salt, which I've added in a, in the water. Then I divide by the volume of that solution, which must be in, in liters or decimeters cubed. So the formula says that C equals to N over V. Now this N is the number of moles in what in mole that mol what about v that is volume which must be in decimeters cubed so because of the importance of the units we always have to convert any given volume to the one which is a standard that is si that is standard international unit so we're saying c is the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed then end the number of moles okay and then v is the volume which must be in liters or decimeters cubed so not the following when performing our calculations now if i want to convert from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed i divide by what by a thousand don't forget this is very important as we continue let me say it again if i want to convert from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed, I divide by what? By 1000. Okay. And also, okay, for example, 125 centimeters cubed is the same as 125 over 1000, which gives me 0, 0,125 decimeters cubed. Also, don't forget that 1 milliliter, which I call 1 mil, okay, 1 milliliter. Is the same as one centimeter cubed and also one liter is the same as one decimeter cubed so if a question is given in uh, milliliters 
first of all I must know those are centimeters cubed and then to convert them to decimeters cubed I do what? I divide by a thousand. Okay, let us look at some more examples here. The question says that uh, calculate the concentration of a sodium chloride solution containing 0, 0,125 moles sodium chloride in a 500 cubic centimeters of water. Let me say it again. The question says that uh, calculate the concentration of a sodium chloride solution containing 0, 125 moles sodium chloride in 500 cubic centimeters of water. Now we have just seen that uh, our concentration C equals to what? Equals to N over V, right? So N is the number of moles. What about V? V is the volume. Okay, now look at our given question here. They gave us what? They gave us the moles, these are moles here, these are moles here, as you can see, these are moles here. Now they gave us the volume, which is this 500. I hope you're not too forgetful. This volume, as you can see, is in centimeters cubed, ne? so if I want to get my answer, I must convert them to what? I must convert it to decimeters cubed, so how many moles do I have? I have 0, what? I have 0. 125 0, 0, 0, so divide by the volume which must be in what in decimeters cubed now the given volume to me is 500 what centimeters cubed so I divide by a thousand because you're not doing math light you know that divided by a thousand here I'm going to get 0, 0,5 so this is 0, what? 0, 0,5. Now, to get my answer, I'm going to get my calculator and divide this. I'm going to divide 0, 0,125 by 0, 0,5. 0, 0,125. 0, 0,125. 0, 0,125. 0, 0,125. So, as you can see, I'm going to say 0, 0,125 divided by 0, 0,5. So, what is my answer? My answer is 0, 0,1 over 4. If I press SD, it gives me 0, 0,25. And that's my concentration, which is measured in what? Can somebody tell me how to measure concentration? It's measured in uh, moles per decimeter cubed. Let's go back to the board. Okay, um, so if you check what we have here next, we see that um, our answer is 0, 0,25 moles per decimeter cubed. I hope we are together. If we are not, please don't worry about it just just stop there and replay the video okay next week example says that uh, calculate the, the number of moles of copper sulfate solution of uh, 0, 0,02 moles per decimeter cubed in 250 mils in water solution what are we looking for? They said calculate the number of moles. So I want to get the number of moles of what? Of copper to sulfate solution of 0, 0,02 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay. In which volume? In 250 mils. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the number of moles that is N. I'm looking for this N here. Right? Looking for this N here. And uh, what do I have? What do I have? I have the concentration. This is my C. Okay. What else do I have? I have the volume. This is my volume here. This is my volume here. What does the formula say? C equals to N over V. 
but I want number of moles and I have my C so this is what 0 comma 0 2 so I will say that uh, 0 comma 0 2 yes that's my concentration 0 comma 0 2 okay equals to what equals to the number of moles which I'm looking for that small n okay divided by what divided by the volume now my volume is in milliliters I hope you still remember we said that uh, it be the same as saying cubic centimeters whereby to convert to decimeters cubed I do what I divide by a thousand so if you divide 250 by a thousand what do you get you get zero comma zero comma two five so I'm gonna put here zero comma two five of course now this is decimeters cubed zero comma two what two five decimeters cubed so now to get my n as you can see I can just cross multiply n in other words my n equals zero comma zero two multiplied by zero comma two five I hope we are together hope we are together let us proceed here um yeah that's what I do exactly here and if I continue here I find out that after multiplying that gives me um 5 times 10 power negative 3 okay moles these are moles please put some the units there I think I forgot to put moles forgot to put what moles these are moles the question already moles so this is M or L I hope we are together now another question says that uh, calculate the volume of uh, a 0, 0,8 moles per decimeter cubed potassium bromide solution containing 1,6 moles of potassium bromide so this time I have the concentration again and I have the moles and I want the volume so what I do I just substitute and I make my volume the subject of the formula okay now my given concentration is in moles per decimeter cubed as you can see it here what about my moles it is in moles that's 1,6 moles divided by the volume so as you can see if I cross multiply I'm going to say 0, 0,8 multiplied by the V equals to 1,6 so because I'm looking for V I divide the 1,6 by what by 0, 0,8 and then guess what I did two decimeters cubed. I hope we are together. Now, sometimes it, it can be a little bit more interesting. They can say calculate the concentration of 17 grams of silver nitrate dissolved in 250 cubic centimeters of water. Hmm. Let us check it out. The question wants what? They said that calculate what? Calculate the concentration so we want our concentration of 17 grams of silver nitrate dissolved in what in 250 cubic centimeters water so now what do we want we want the concentration right we want what concentration C and so what do we have we have the mass that is small m in grams okay what else do we have because they said it is silver nitrate it means we can also get the what the molar mass we can we can get what the molar mass that's capital m now we can get what the molar mass which is capital what which is capital m and then what else do we have i have the volume but unfortunately it is in cubic centimeters yet fortunately i can put it in a decimeters cubed what can i do here to do that i divide by a thousand divide by what by a thousand which gives me what which gives me 0, 0.25 this meters cubed okay so here we go we want to get our um, concentration eh? okay now if you check what we said we said that concentration c 
is the same as what? It's the same as n over v. Ne? The same as what? n over v. What does n represent? The number of moles. But how do, how do I get my n? We said from the start of the video that to get your n number of moles, we divide what? We divide the mass given to you, that small m, by what? By the molar mass. By the molar what? Molar mass. Now somebody can say, teacher, how to get the molar mass? The molar mass, people, is gotten from a periodic table. So because they said silver nitrate, now silver nitrate is given by AG, 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 and then what falls after that is nitrate, which is NO, NO3, NO, NO1, NO3, okay, and then let me get the molar mass actually here. Now, silver, that is AG, nitrogen, N, oxygen, there are three of them. So, let us find our molar mass before we proceed. So, if we take our periodic table again, let's check it out. Silver nitrate, silver nitrate, silver nitrate. Okay, now, um, silver nitrate, we said it's AG. So, where is our AG here? What is our AG? Where is our AG? Where is our AG, guys? Okay. So, our AG, we need to know it's what? It's the molar mass. Okay. Now, here we go. Our AG is this one here. That is 108. So, because we have got AG, that is silver, nitrogen is 14, oxygen is 16. Eh? So, let us now compute, compute the molar mass. Okay. Now, our molar mass is going to be for AG nitrate. Um, <coughs> let's get it. Now, silver AG is 108. It's going to be 108. 108. Then plus, down for nitrogen, which is 14, right? And then plus oxygen, but they are 3, ne? It's going to be now 16 multiplied by what? By 3. So close bracket here. What did we get? We get 170 grams per mole. Wow. So I have my molar mass as 170 grams per mole. Don't forget that when I go back to my, my whiteboard, now that's my M. So let me get my moles now, guys. Hope we are together. So my moles, I'm going to say that I have, what is the smaller, the, the smaller whatever, small, the, the mass, it's 17 grams. Ne? I'm going to say 17 divided by what? By 170. So if I divide by 170, what do I get? Um, I don't know if you see this properly, but uh, if I compute this, now I get, what do I get, guys? Talk to me. I get 0, 0,1. I get what? 0, 0,1. Now, the 0, 0,1 is my number of moles. But the question was asking for concentration, ne? So... C equals to N over V. So, to get my concentration, <coughs> I come back and say that C equals to N over V, but my N is what? It's 0, 0,1. 0, 0,1. So, the 0, 0,1 divided by my volume, which already we said is it is, uh, it is 0, 0,25 from here. I don't know if you see that. So, 0, 0,2 what? 0, 0,25. 0,25. Let us use our calculator now to see what we get. Okay. 0, 0,25. 0, 0,1 divided by 0, 0,25. 0, 0,25. Okay. 0, 0,1. 
divided by 0, 0,25. What do we get? We have 0, we have 2 over 5, which is the same if I press SD, it gives me 0, 0,4. Okay, so my answer is 0, 0,4 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, I hope we are together. Let's check our solution here. Back to the right example. So what we have is it 0, 0,4 or not? Let's check uh, this side. Yes, we go to this one here. Yes, wow. We have 0, 0,4 moles. Something's missing. You can tell me what it is. It must be moles per decimeter cubed. Moles per what? Per decimeter cubed. Because this is concentration. This is what? Concentration. So, must be our negative three so that's my answer guys i hope we are still together if we are not please don't forget just stop the video and replay it i'm sure you will do it you will understand okay now um the next week example is um almost the same as this one but the only difference is that they say calculate the mass of lithium carbonate used to prepare 0, 0,36 moles a decimeter cubed solution in 50 mils. So this time they want what? This time they want to calculate the, the mass. Okay. The mass to prepare what? Prepare 0, 0,36. That's a concentration. Okay, in which solution? In 250 mils. Okay, so I do the same thing like I did in the previous example, and then I just substitute. Just be careful, guys. Now, there's a shortcut here, by the way. If I combine these two formulae, that is C equals to N over V and N equals to mass over molar mass, it gives me C equals to M over molar mass times V. So I can directly get my answer because they talked about lithium carbonate and they gave me the mass. Okay, do I want the mass? Ne? I have. I can get the molar mass from here. Okay, and I know the volume and the concentration. So after getting molar mass from the periodic table and I substitute it here, as you can see, I get. 0, 0,36 equals to mass divided by what? By 74 times my volume, which is 0, 0,25. And then if I cross multiply, surely I get my mass of lithium carbonate as what? As 6,66 grams. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please try this last activity. Catch you in the next video. My name is Patrick Kamala. I'm a tutor and educator for physical sciences and mathematics from grades 9 to 10. We are found at Rostecker College in town. If you want more information, you can call me on 0785-22041. I repeat, 0785-222. 0 for 1. Now, those learners who are preparing for our test, these questions, they are very good for your test. Please practice them. Bye-bye. Take care.